Good morning, everyone. Sorry about that with the music. Um, I got my phone on Do Not Disturb playing the music, and uh, calls are still coming through, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, but thank you for joining me this morning. Today is um, a unique day in our church uh, because it is... Um, yeah, a weird thing with the um, backdrop there. Um, I guess. Look at that. Yeah. I guess. Just pull it all closer. There we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, today's a unique day in our in our church because it's the day of Escape the Cape. So if you're watching this, I'm pre-recording this because we won't uh, be able to be in church until 11 o'clock. So if you're in the area, uh, we want to encourage you to come by around 11. We're actually going to have lunch outside and we're just going to um, have a short service and then uh, just enjoy some fellowship together. And uh, so that's going to be uh, today at uh, 11 o'clock and we're going to start eating around 12. So if you happen to be coming by, uh, just uh, come on in and uh, we'd love to see you. Uh, we're going to be making some hot dogs and hamburgers outside and uh, just enjoying our time together. And Escape to Cape Triathlon uh, goes right by our church. The, the bikers go right by our church. They shut everything down. Uh, it's a fun day. It's a great day in, in our area. Uh, it's uh, People are coming in from all over the country. Uh, so we are going to be down at the ferry. Uh, over the weekend. So if you're watching this, we were there yesterday <laughs> and um, we, um, we, we, um, I'm sure I had a good time. And uh, um, so this morning I am praying on the boat uh, before people go out and jump off. They jump off the boat and then they come and they bike. Uh, they bike by our church and then they, uh, they run. Uh, and so it, it's really amazing and it, it's an amazing event and we're excited to be part of it. Um, so uh, we, uh, again, want to just invite you to come. Also, if you'd like to uh, give to this ministry, we, we just want to remind you that you could do so by going to capemayfirstassembly.org uh, forward slash donate. And uh, you can donate there or you could text to give. And uh, the number to text to give is um, 609 Four hundred four zero seven five, and uh, you can give there. We appreciate your faithfulness in giving, and uh, we appreciate those of you who have been giving online. And so, uh, thank you so much. And uh, we're uh, again just so excited to have you here this morning. I just want to give a quick message today. I know it's kind of a busy day for us, but I wanted to meet with you here on Facebook and on YouTube, uh, just to give you uh, a quick uh, message and just. Uh, a little bit of word of encouragement. And since today is the triathlon day, um, my message is called Running the Race. And uh, we find ourselves in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And it says this, Therefore, since we have such a huge, uh, such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, dispensing, uh, the, dispensing the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For, for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, so that you won't grow weary and give up. Um, the book of Hebrews uh, is believed to be a sermon. So when you read the book of Hebrews, like many books in the Bible, the best way to read it is to read it all the way through. Uh, and, and imagine um, someone like Apollos uh, or Barnabas uh, possibly reading the sermon or, or preaching the sermon and the sermon being written down. Uh, that's what many believe this is. And so uh, who was he preaching to? He was preaching to people that were uh, going through a form of persecution and uh, they, were, they were getting weary in their Christian life and uh, they were, con they were uh, considering uh, leaving the faith because it was just getting too hard. And, and so the uh, author of Hebrews, uh, Apollos or Barnabas or possibly the Apostle Paul, uh, the author of Hebrews is uh, saying to them, hey, 
don't leave the faith. And so today uh, we will be uh, celebrating uh, people that are in a race. They are in a triathlon. They are going to bike. They are going to swim. Uh, they are going to run. Not in that order. Actually, swim, bike, then run. Um, and and they are going to have to endure a race. Well, it's just like that for us. We have to endure a race that's set before us. Uh, what's really interesting is when we see here the, the phrase, let us lay aside the sin that so easily besets us. Um, it's not necessarily the sin that you think it is. Uh, we, we have like... Uh, the big sins in America tend to be sexual sins. We we make a big deal out of that. And I'm not saying these things aren't a big deal. They are. Um, but we make a big deal out of sexual sins and we make a big deal out of um, um, pro uh, pr uh, probably uh, doing something to someone that's really uh, awful, uh, maybe lying to someone, maybe um, uh, just um, uh, hurting someone in some way. And those sins are really, um, are big deals. But um, what the author of Hebrews, the people he's talking to, are not dealing necessarily with those sins. They're dealing with um, the sin of unbelief. And when I say unbelief, I'm not talking about in the sense of a, um, uh, a, a, what would be the word, the, the prosperity gospel sort of thing. Uh, I'm talking about leaving Christ, leaving our faith, our trust in Christ. So uh, I want to give you three things today that they were struggling with. This is Hebrews 12, and in Hebrews 11, we have the chapter of faith. So what the preacher does here uh, is he goes through all the Old Testament and goes through the main characters of the Old Testament. He goes through Moses. He goes through Lot. He goes through Samson. Uh, some of these people were people of uh, great integrity, and some of these people had no integrity of, at all. But one of the things that they had in common is they put their trust and they put their faith in God. And he calls them a great cloud of witnesses. Now, I don't know if they literally can look onto us and watch us, uh, but they're witnesses in the sense that they, uh, they have gone before us and they witness to us that the way we live for God is by putting our trust in him, by putting our faith in him. So um, I want to give three things that they were struggling with that the writer of Hebrews dealt with and that, that we deal with today. And that first thing is we lose sight of who Christ is. The writer of Hebrews spends a lot of time on this, the preacher from Hebrews. Uh, he's, he spends a lot of time talking about he's a greater high priest than, than Aaron. Aaron was the first high priest, and he spends a lot of time talking about how Jesus is a greater high priest. In fact, uh, he's the high priest that not only um, intercedes for us, as all high priests do, but he didn't, uh, he didn't bring a sacrifice. He is the sacrifice for us. So he is both the high priest and the sacrifice for us. So, so the writer of Hebrews is saying, look, if you're going to leave Christ, you're leaving the one who is the greatest high priest of all. Uh, he is greater than Aaron. They, they were being persecuted. One of the groups that was persecuting them were uh, Jewish uh, people who were saying that it was, a, it, it was a false religion to follow Christ. And, um, and they were saying, you got to go back to the law. you got to go back to uh, having Aaron as your high priest, or depending on the sacrifices in the temple. And the, re, the, the, the preacher in Hebrews is saying, no, Jesus Christ is the sacrifice. Jesus Christ is the high priest. And he spends time talking about how Jesus Christ is greater than all the angels. You know what I love about the book of Hebrews is that uh, so many sermons that I listen to today really concentrate on me. Uh, they say things like, hey, you can make it because you are, um, you are awesome in God. You are you are God's child. You are God's chosen. You are you are uh, the uh, you know you are more than a conqueror. Well, I I suppose that's all true. It is, but the writer of Hebrews doesn't say don't give up because you're so great. He says don't give up because Jesus is so great. Uh, don't leave Jesus the one who has given everything, the one who intercedes for us. Um, and, and so think about this. God put the plan of salvation forward for you and me. Uh, he implemented it in Jesus Christ, the, the one who gave himself as a sacrifice for our sins. And now the Spirit bears witness to, the, to this. So the Spirit intercedes for us. 
the Spirit intercedes through us, right? Intercedes on our behalf. Jesus intercedes for us, and he's interceding to God the Father who put the plan of salvation in place for all of us. So just like it says in Romans, if God is for us, who can be against us? And so today we might be tempted to give up because we are forgetting, we're losing sight on who Christ is. Uh, the second sin that they had was uh, they were losing sight on what Christ does. Um, and um, Christ ever lives to intercede for us. Christ is the one. Uh, look at what this scripture says here is Jesus is uh, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Uh, look at what he does. He gives us faith. And he protects, he perfects our faith. So if you're struggling with faith today, the best thing to do is to go to Christ, to go to him, uh, to, to have him pioneer and perfect your faith. It's the spirit of God that births faith in us and perfects faith in us. Um, what else did he do? Uh, it says, keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, this, uh, despising the shame, right? So, so he went to the cross, he endured all the shame, and then he set that shame aside, and he sat at the right hand of God. Now, now this is important. Jesus didn't sit at the right of hand of God in a sense that this is the first time he's ever been in this position and he went there because of the cross. No, Jesus sits at the right hand of God as a person in authority that has declared you and I righteous. So he sits with all authority and declares our righteousness uh, because he sits at the right hand of God. He sits on the throne of God with all the authority as the God man. Um, and, and considered him who do, endured so much hostilities from sinners himself so that we don't grow weary. So think about what Christ does. He endured the shame, the sin. He endured the, the persecution. Uh, in, in our day and age here in the United States, we really don't endure much, per, much persecution at all. There might be some who do and some think we do, but we don't. But we do struggle with our faith. We do struggle with questions. We do struggle with, with life. We do struggle with um, just what it means to be a Christian. In fact, a, a, a phrase going around right now a lot is called deconstruction. A lot of people are deconstructing their faith. And that's not completely a bad thing because there is the Americanized Christianity that we've all grown up in, and then there's the real Jesus. And so the writer of Hebrews would say, look at the real Jesus. Don't get caught up in the Americanized Christianity, or in this case for them, the, the, the Jewish uh, idea of Christianity or the Jewish idea of God. But look to Jesus, the pioneer, the starter, and the perfecter of our faith. And you say, I don't have much faith. Where do I go? I go to Christ. Um, in the Old Testament, holiness wasn't quite what we think holiness is. And again, I'm not saying that sin is okay, so don't get me wrong. Uh, but in, um, in our tradition and the Assemblies of God, uh, we've come out of the holiness movement, and we often preach holiness about what we do, right? God wants you to be holy, so stop doing bad stuff. Well, th th there's a part of that that's true. I'm not denying that. But what holiness really is, when you look in the Old Testament, um, what holiness always was is your proximity to God. Um, in the tabernacle, there was the outer court, the inner court, the holy place, and the holy of holies. Uh, imagine a rock dropped in the water and a, and a ripple effect going out. Well, the center of that rock is where most of the power and most uh, the center of that circle uh, is where most of the power and the energy is, and as it ripples out, it gets less and less and less. Well, that's the idea of holiness. You are holy the closer to God you are. And we have the opportunity to be in the very presence of God, so it's his presence that makes us holy. It's not what I do that makes me holy. It's God's presence that makes me holy. And so um, the, the the people of God in the Old Testament were holy 
because the tabernacle was right in the middle of the camp. When they were wandering through the desert, right in the middle of the camp was the tabernacle. So God didn't say, I'm going to put the tabernacle on top of a hill and everyone's going to have to climb and they're going to have to find their way to me and they might get some holiness. He said, no, I'm going to put my holy presence right in the middle of the people. And that's where God is. That's where God is in your life and in my life. So when we pray, what we're doing is we're connecting with the holy presence of God. And so Jesus opened up the way for us to come in to his presence. And so he wants us to be holy, but what it means to be holy, what it really means to be holy is to be close to God. That's what it means to be holy. And so if you think holiness is, I'm going to, I'm going to make a list uh, and I'm going to follow this list uh, or my church is going to give me a list and I'm going to follow this list and that's going to make me holy. No, that's just following rules. Uh, what makes us holy is being in the presence of God. And the closer we are to his presence, the more holy we are. And God dispenses his holiness through his grace. The word holy it means to be set apart. And, excuse me, God is the ultimate holy one. And so we become holy by being with him. And so, um, yes, I would agree we need to live a godly life. And, and, and I would agree that God cares about how we act and what we do. But if that is the sole purpose of your Christian life, if that is what you concentrate on, then you're not holy at all. You're not even close to being holy. In fact, if you have a list that you're keeping and you're really good at that list, better than anybody, uh, but that's your relationship with God, you are not holy at all. You are far from being holy. What makes you holy is being in the presence of God. Um, and so thirdly, um, uh, the, the third sin that they were dealing with is losing sight of who we should trust. And, um, and this was a big deal. So the, the author of Hebrews is preaching this sermon, and he's preaching this sermon to a group of people that are struggling in their faith, that are struggling to keep following God uh, because they're being persecuted. Uh, their, their, their lives are being um, just uh, turned upside down. They're looking at a lot of fearful things in front of them. And they're saying, if I keep serving God, then I am going to lose. Maybe I'll lose my, my home. Maybe I'll lose my family. Maybe I'll lose my life. And they're looking at this. And, and what is the writer of Hebrews saying? He's saying, look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Put your trust in him. Uh, it would have been easy for them to say, look, I'm just going to go back to my simple Jewish life. Most of these were Jewish converts that he was preaching to. That's why it's the book of Hebrews. That's a, the book of Hebrews is really a phenomenal commentary on the Old Testament. And if you really wonder, well, is Jesus in the Old Testament? Read the book of Hebrews because it's all over there. Uh, so these are Jewish believers, and, and the preacher here is showing Jesus all through the Old Testament. And he's finally coming to the end of his sermon here and saying, Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, who through the joy set before him endured the cross. Uh, and so uh, the endurance that he's talking about here isn't trying harder, right? It isn't like, okay, I'm going to try harder and then I'll endure. He's saying, no, look, get back to your faith. Get back to your trust in God. Get back to the simplicity of your trust in God. Stop trusting in yourself and start putting your trust in him. And I think this is a message that really resonates with us today. Uh, because it's so easy for us to be putting ourselves in human, putting our trust in human leaders, putting our trust in whether or not the economy is good, or putting our trust in, um, um, you know, maybe uh, the next election, or putting our trust in, um, well, you know, do I have enough money in the bank? Do I have enough to retire on? Um, all those things are fine, but they're just fine. What we need to do is put our trust in Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And we forget who to trust in. So three sins that we need to lay off. When he says, uh, lay, uh, lay aside the sin that so easily entangles us. Um, the sin of losing sight of who Christ is. The sin of losing sight of what Christ does. And the sin 
of losing sight of who we should trust. Well, uh, again, like I said, it was going to be short today. Uh, there's a lot going on this weekend, but we just want to thank you for joining us. Again, if you're in the Cape May area and uh, it's around 11 o'clock, they'll have the road opened up again, and you're welcome to, to just hang out with us and, and enjoy our time of fellowship and, in, and our time of worship. So bless you and uh, pray that God uh, minister to you today. Let me pray for you. Father, uh, I pray for everyone out there that's just dealing with discouragement, that's just dealing with um, struggles, just dealing with life. We pray, Lord God, that you would um, just minister to them today. And Lord, uh, we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith, and we put our trust in you, and we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and give you peace in Christ's name. Amen.